Hey everyone, Tina here. A while back, I posted a video online asking you what game I should play next. The game that got the most votes was Hero Quest. Hero Quest is a dungeon crawl slash role playing game that was very, very popular back in the day. I believe it was published in 1986. So it is quite an old game、um, and、uh, probably hard to find now. Of course, it is a classic,、uh, and many will remember playing this game as a child. I myself did not. I only got introduced to this game not too long ago, but I am very glad to have gotten myself a copy uh, and uh, very much looking forward to showing you how it plays. In the world of Hero Quest, one player will play the role of Sargon, who's the evil sorcerer, and the rest of the players will play the roles of heroes. As heroes, you want to work together to save the empire from Sargon's evil forces. In this particular playthrough, however, we'll be using a software, a game master software, that will take on controlling the monsters.、Um, and so we do not need a game master for this game, and we can play this solo. So here we have the Hero Quest Game Master program, and I will go ahead and、um, open up. The scenario that I want to play through, which is Kellar's Keep 1, The Great Gate. So, this is an expansion to the base game.、Um, so, I thought I would play that. Let's open that up. And the first thing the software wants us to do is to tell it what the、uh, players are. So, let's do a four player game with the barbarian, elf, dwarf, and wizard. And In terms of play order, I've already set it up here.、Uh, player one would be the barbarian, player two would be the dwarf, player three the elf, and player four the wizard. There are other options here like hero stats.、Um, so I've basically inputted the base game body, mind, attack, and defense stats for the four players. And I'm not going to adjust. Them in any way for now.、Uh, and finally, you have some options here in terms of sound effects and how fast you want the monsters to move in terms of you know, the, the animation there.、Um, but for now, let's just leave it where it is and click OK. And here's the story that starts our scenario Keller's Keep is an expansion to Hero Quest, and in it, There are, let's see how many, 10 new quests. So, this is the quest book.、Um, and so, I'm not supposed to look into this because there are, each, each quest is going to be a different board layout with you know, different monsters and quest objectives.、Um, and only the game master can look into the quest to see how things are laid out and where the monsters are and such. But let's read the story. Inside、uh, and see how our quest begins. My friends, I have alarming news. The Emperor and his army are trapped in Keller's Keep, the underground bastion of the fortress Karak Varn. This great dwarven stronghold lies deep within the heart of the world's edge mountains. The fortress is well defended by a fear that time is against us. The Emperor's army weakens with starvation while the enemy grows stronger by the day. It is up to you, brave heroes, to rescue the Emperor. The Great Book of Lore Tome has revealed much useful information to me. Many thousands of years ago, the Dwarven made their home in the world's edge mountains. With their great engineering skills, they built vast cities that cut deep into the rock. The cities were connected by tunnels that stretched for miles beneath the mountains. On the eastern side of the mountains, the dwarves constructed huge fortresses to guard against the evil legions of chaos. The greatest of these fortresses was Karak Varn. The dwarves lived for many years in peace, for the orcs and goblins did not dare attack the well defended cities. But during this time of peace, the dwarves became careless. The army grew smaller and the guards less vigilant. Then came Zargon, the evil sorcerer and commander of all that is evil. 
Zargon spent years raising a vast army of orcs, goblins, and monsters beyond description. When the attack came, there was no warning. The dwarves fought with great valor, but their enemy was too strong. One by one, the fortress fell. Only Karak Varn held. Most of the hidden tunnels near Karak Varn have long been forgotten. However, Lord Tome has revealed to me a hidden passage known as Grin's Crag. This secret walkway is named after the dwarf who first discovered it. While searching for a rich vein of gold, Grin found a narrow footpath running along the edge of an abyss. He explored beyond and found himself in the lower caverns of Kellar's Keep. Grin carved a map onto a stone tablet so that he might find the path again. He then broke the tablet into pieces and hid the fragments throughout the halls of Belorn, ancient chambers that lie beneath, deep beneath the world's edge mountains. First, you must journey through the halls of Belorn. These hallowed halls have been stripped of many of the riches that once adorned them. Yet, a treasure of two may be found by a hero with a keen eye. But beware, orcs and goblins now dwell here. You must make them pay dearly for the trespass. Even Lortom does not reveal the exact location of Grin's Crag. You must find the four pieces of Grin's stone map that are scattered throughout the halls. Only then can you travel the path to Kellar's Keep and lead the Emperor to safety. I shall take you to the Great Gate, but from there you will be on your own. Good luck, my friends. When you need my guidance, listen deep within yourself. Mentor. All right, let's go back to the software. Notice that the story is also on this page here. We're going to click the arrow. And let's see where we are. Okay, so at the end of it, it says, Your first task is to find the wooden exit door that leads into the warrior halls. And the wandering monster would be orcs. All right, so we um, now that we've read the story, let's go ahead and click this arrow, which begins the game. Here we see the game board, and as you can see, most of it is unrevealed because we got to be exploring them to see what's inside. So the first thing we do is um, go to our starting location. And unlike the base game, the this expansion's starting location is not at a, um, at a hallway, so um, the stairway. Um, it is at outside a wooden door that's going to be on the side of the board. So let me go ahead and place that door and our heroes. So here's the game board, which is empty for now. And our heroes, um, according to the software, are all the way on the top left corner there. There's a door. Now, in the rulebook of the expansion, it says that uh, you would start the quest outside the door and the door is closed. And you actually need to ask Sargon, the evil sorcerer, to open the door for you, which is kind of interesting that you're asking your opponent to, you know, open, open up and let us in. Anyway, uh, for some reason, the software does not do that. So I guess uh, we'll just play it out. We're behind the door and our first player would be the Barbarian. In terms of character setup, we're playing four characters, Barbarian, Dwarf, Elf, and Wizard. And they each start with um, some body and mind points. So body would be sort of their health points. And then the mind points is sort of the, the, the strength of their, of their, of their mind. So I guess similar to Arkham Horror, that would be, you know, your health and your sanity. I've put these uh, dice here to represent their, their stats, their points. And we'll be adjusting these as we go through the game because I don't want to be writing on pieces of paper. Uh, and what else? Uh, the Barbarian. He has the most attack. He has attack of three, whereas the other um, characters have attack of two or less. In terms of starting weapon, he has a broad sword. The dwarf, he's very good at disarming traps. So he's the engineer in this group. He's not very good at attacking, um, though, so got to watch out on that. The elf and the wizard, they're the only two characters that can cast spells. So we actually start the game with four types of spells, water, fire, earth, and air. And we have to distribute these among these two players. 
Um, so the rules say that to start, you need the wizard gets to pick one type of spell. So I think the wizard will take the fire spells, and there's going to be three cards for each spell. So that goes to the wizard, and then the elf would pick one. Um, he's going to pick the earth, and the remaining is going to go to the wizard. So the elf will be working with the earth spells, and the wizard will be working with the remaining spells. Here's how a turn would work. The heroes would activate in player order, and then Sargon would get to go. So when heroes activate, they can perform any of these actions, um, and then move, or move and then perform any of the actions. So they can only do one action, but they can do that before or after they move. And in terms of actions that they can do, they can attack an adjacent monster, cast a spell if um, they have a spell they can use. So this would be the elf or the wizard. Search for treasure, looking inside the room. And you can only do that when there's no monster in the room. You can search for secret doors um, in a, either a room or a corridor. And uh, you can only do that when you have no visible monsters in line of sight. You can search for traps in a room or a corridor. Um, and similar to secret doors, you can only do that when there are no monsters in, in, visible to you. Finally, you can disarm a trap. For now, let's go ahead and start the turn with our first player, who is the Barbarian. The heroes venture into the Great Gates. As they approach the wooden door, it magically opens. And here's an open door. And the Barbarian peeks inside and sees. According to the software, the barbarian uh, through the open door would see a block square tile here. So let's go ahead and set that up. And now the barbarian is going to move. To move, we have to roll two movement dice, two d6s, and add up the points there. And we rolled a six and a one. That means we move seven. We or we have up to seven movement points, I should say. So the barbarian is going to step into the door. Because there's a block square tile there, he knows he can't go this way, and he needs to go this way. Now, once he moves into this corridor, he can see the rest of this corridor. So we can consult the software now and see what is being populated there. So there is another block square tile here and a door right above it. And it looks like the corridor is free of any other like monsters or anything like that. Let's continue his movement now. He has six more to go. He is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. He's going to stand um, in front of this closed door here. And he now has the option to open this door. And that does not count as an action. Opening a door and looking through open doors, they don't count as actions. So the barbarian is going to open this door and see what's inside the way the software works is you have to be dragging the the icon for the player so let me find my mouse and show you you have to drag the icon one by one like this for it to log that the character has stepped on this tile. And this is important because I cannot just drag this barbarian, barbarian down to the door and say move there. Because there could have been things that triggered when I stepped on the tiles here. For example, traps. So what I need to do is do it one by one like this. And as long as nothing pops up, no, no windows pop up, I know that that was a safe square to step on. All right, so that was the movement of the barbarian. He's going to open the store 
and see what's inside. So let's go ahead and reveal this location. And the software tells us that there are a bunch of orcs and goblins inside the room. Just to show you how they look like up close, this is the smaller guys are goblins. And this big guy here is the orc, so he's a little bit stronger in terms of attack. Um, and you can see that in terms of miniature quality, uh, they're quite good, knowing that they were, you know, created in 1986 or so. Um, so this is quite impressive uh, work from Games Workshop. That's a pretty scary looking bunch. The barbarian has done his movement. So now he can do some actions. Now, looking at his options, he could attack an adjacent monster, but unfortunately there are no monsters adjacent to him. He cannot cast a spell, and he cannot do any of the searches because he has monsters that is visible to him. So I guess that's all in terms of his turn. Um, and we're just going to stare into the eyes of all of the goblins and orcs in the room um, and uh, maybe taunt them. Next up we have the dwarf. Let's roll for his movement with the two movement dice. And he rolls a five and a two. So he would have seven movement points. The dwarf enters the door and goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And I believe he will stop just behind the Barbarian there. Uh, in terms of movement, you could move through friendly characters, but you need to end on a space that is um, vacant. And the Dwarf cannot do so with his remaining one movement point, so he's just going to stand behind the Barbarian there. Let's not forget to track our movement on the software. Um, so the Dwarf, he moved behind the Barbarian. And now I know that there's no traps here, so I can just drag him right behind, knowing that he won't trigger anything because the Barbarian already tested the space for us. And there's nothing really I wanted to do in terms of his actions, so let's just get the entire party up next to the Barbarian. Let's roll for movement for the Elf. And he rolled 5 and a 3, so that's 8 movement points. So with the 8 movement... The elf is going to go one, two, three, four, five, and just, he could go in, but I, I don't think they would go in. Um, that's a lot of monsters that would activate on Zargon's turn. Um, so I don't think we'll do anything this turn uh, beyond just walking, just walking behind the barbarian because I want the barbarian to, to do most of the attacking since he has the best attack on the software she he's going to be behind the dwarf there and then finally let's do movement for wizard and we rolled wow a whipping six and a three so nine movement points but the wizard is obvi obviously not going to the front lines so she's gonna go one two three four and just stand behind everybody else she's gonna go there now, we finish our hero's turns, uh, and so we're going to click this next button, which would activate the, the Zargon turn, uh, and so the monsters would do their moves. So, next. Now, did you see that? The goblin there moved down, so the goblin was originally here. He moved down two spaces to here, and you see that this window popped up and it says monster attack. What happened there is the software controlled the AI, um, so the goblin moved down and attacked the barbarian with two combat dice. The software also does the dice rolling for us for the monsters. So it says zero skulls rolled. What that means is in combat, what, you, what you're going to do is roll these white combat dice. The number of dice rolled is going to depend on the monster. So if we look at the goblin monster card, it says it has, you know, movement squares of 10, which means it can move 10 squares. Attack dice of 2, which means it will roll 2 of these white attack dice when they attack. 
If they roll a skull, that would be one hit. Uh, two skulls, two hits, and so on. Um, if they rolled, you know, anything else, it would be count as a miss. What else is here? Defend dice. That means they roll one of these white dice when they defend. And when monsters defend, defend against attacks, they have to roll this black shield in order to count as a successful defend. Uh, body points, that's the health points. They have one point of health and one point of mind uh, strength. So that's what's on the monster card. Let me show you the orc one. Similar information. The only thing is that the orc actually has more attack dice. They roll three instead of two. Uh, they have more defend dice. So they're a little bit stronger in that sense, but they're also slower. So the goblins can move 10 and the orc can move eight squares. I should also mention that when the heroes are attacking, it's the same thing. When you attack, you want skulls, but when heroes defend, they want to roll this white shield. So monsters want to roll black shields, heroes want to roll white shields to successfully defend. Because the goblin basically didn't roll any skulls, that was a complete miss. So I'm not even going to roll defense die. And I'm just going to click OK. My target is not dead, so OK. Alright, so the software says the second goblin is going to move. Playing this out on the board, the first goblin, he came down at this door and swung at the barbarian, which is on the other side of the door, and he missed. The second goblin, he's going to stand right there. You cannot attack diagonally or move diagonally, so this goblin, he actually cannot attack the barbarian, so he's sort of just stuck there. And that's why I didn't want my heroes to move in. Because um, I wanted to, the Barbarian to sort of block off the Goblins for, uh, for the attacks. So that's all for the AI activation because none of the other monsters can attack. And I guess the software didn't want them to move. So it's the player's turns now. Once again, we're starting with the Barbarian. And so he's just going to stand there and swing his sword at the Goblin. Looking at his character card says attack dice three so he's going to roll three of those white dice and he rolled two skulls so two hits the software actually does rolling dice for the monsters even for defense so what i'm going to do is tell the software that i attacked by double clicking this goblin here and it will tell me the monster defend defended with this roll which is zero black shields, because that is a white shield. We had two hits. The goblin did not defend any, so that's actually two points going through. But because the goblin only has one body point, um, it is, of course, dead. So we'll tell the software that select body point less. There's only maximum one. And the tile has turned into the skull icon, which basically just tells you that the goblin's dead. Having attack, the barbarian can now move. So I think he will move. Let's see, uh, where do I want him to be? I guess before we decide, we should roll the movement dice. And we have a four and a one, so we get to move five. So the barbarian is actually gonna move into this room, one. Two, three, five, uh, maybe four, like this. Oh, what the heck, let's just move to full five. And luckily, the software didn't tell us of any traps, so that was completely safe. Um, so let's record that one, two, three, four, five. And this goblin is dead from the initial attack. Let's roll for movement for the dwarf. And he has five and one, so total of six. With the six, I think he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, go here. 
one, two, three, four, five. And he's going to swing his short sword at this goblin. And with that, he's going to attack with two dice. And wow, look at that. Two skulls. I don't even have to defend because goblins only have one defense dice. Uh, that means at most, it would only defend off one point of damage and they only have one life so the remaining point would definitely go through so this goblin easily um slashed across the neck by the dwarf with his short sword is defeated let's make sure we tell the software that one body point loss is loss all right our heroes are on a roll here we have the elf that's up next so the elf is going to roll for movement first and we rolled a 5 and a 6, so a total of 11 points. Wow, look at all those high rolls. With 11 movement points, the elf is going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So going behind the, sneaking behind the orc there um, to target these little goblins. The elf is going to swing his short sword, uh, which has uh, the same attack dice as the dwarf. So two dice. And unfortunately, he rolled two white shields, which means no damage. Let's make sure we don't forget to log this into the game. So he went in, he went around. I hope there aren't any traps. Dude, he went like this. And yeah, so he's good. He attacked, nothing nothing happened there. Zero damage. And now it is time for the wizard to roll the movement. Um three and a two, so five. That's okay, because I only want the wizard to move one, two, three, four. Uh, I guess four. So block off the door so the goblins can't run away. The wizard will go ahead and do his attack action, attacking the adjacent goblin with his uh, base attack of one dice. And lo and behold, he rolled a skull. Let's see how the goblin defends. He's attacking um, this particular goblin, by the way. Alright, so the goblin defended with one die, which is a white shield. So unfortunately, I mean fortunately, the goblin did not defend off the attack. And that was one body point. And so, goblin was defeated. Pretty good attack for a wizard. The wizard kills off this goblin with a punch. Let's let the software know we're done. The hero turns. And the software says this goblin, he is going to attack the wizard with two combat dice. And looking at the rolls, two black shields, which means no hits. They need skulls. So that was lucky on the wizard's part, because wizards don't ver have very much health, so we gotta watch out on their health there. And let's go okay. The second goblin there, what he did was... Oh, the, the first goblin that attacked, he, after he finished attacking, you see that he moved behind the orc there, for looking for some protection. This goblin attacks, misses, and goes behind the orc. The second goblin, he basically just attacked the elf that was standing next to him. And he rolled one skull. So let's roll for defense for the elf. And we're looking for white shields. Unfortunately, we did not roll any. So the elf will take one body point damage. And he goes from six to... Five. All right. Having done that, let's click OK. Aha! So the goblin moved back to as well, 
And this goblin turns around and attacks the elf, dealing one damage. And then he, um, you know, kind of got scared a little bit. And so he backs off near the door. The orc attacks. So the orc moves up to the barbarian. And he rolled two skulls. The barbarian is going to defend the orc. So attack with two defend dice. And unfortunately, he rolled two black shields. Black shields are useless for heroes. They're only good for monsters. So, Barbarian, unfortunately, um, was surprised by the orc's swing. Uh, and he takes two damage. Eight to six. And let's see if he moves. Nope, he does not move. So that's the end of the monster activation. The orc goes up and attacks Barbarian. Alright, so our board's updated based on the software. And now it's our player's turn uh, once again. I think I'll stop it there for tonight. We've got a good start, I think. Until next time, stay warm and I'll catch you guys later.